Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be checking out a new tool that was just added to my arsenal. Now, the first hint here is I've got all these motorcycles lined up here in the garage, and you may notice I've got the Repsol CBR1000RR that I featured in one of my first videos on this channel and used bike reviews. Yes, that's the same bike. It's in fact my dad's bike, and it's spending a few days in my garage so I can show you this new tool. So the tool we're gonna to be going over today is a diagnostic scanner and service reset tool made by OBD Prog that will supposedly work on all the bikes I've got lined up here and then some. So the folks at OBD Prog reached out to me asking if I wanted to try out this new scanner tool. And typically I don't follow up with these sort of business inquiries because either the tool doesn't match the use case of my channel or it just simply doesn't work with a vehicle I've currently got in the stalls but this one does and in fact i've been looking for a tool like this for a very long time because i'm getting tired of finding these back doorways into the bike's ecu to reset service light case in point the ducati multistrada and the ducati 1198s this tool supposedly takes care of that this tool is called the moto 100 eu they make two versions of this one for american-based motorcycles such as harley davidson and then one for european based motorcycles such as ducati so this one services Ducati, KTM, BMW, Yamaha, Honda, Triumph. Don't think I'm forgetting anything, but we will find out once we start messing with it. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what we've got. All right, so as you can see, it is a tablet style diagnostic tool, which is really cool. And also inside this box are the various adapter cables to work with all the different manufacturers it supports. Looks like right here we've got a charging cable. And this looks like an OBD2 connector, in fact, so potentially this could work with cars as well. And wow, look at all these adapter cables. This is one of the reasons these tools are so great. Because otherwise, if you have multiple manufacturers in your garage, you have to go out and find out what all the adapter cables you need are to even begin to do any sort of diagnostic work on your bike. I'm not sure what connector goes to which manufacturer. This looks familiar. This looks like a BMW connector for sure. And then this one looks similar to a Ducati one. So very cool. All right, so yeah, we've got, what is that? Six different diagnostic connectors plus the OBD2 one, which I think you need just to connect to all these cables. So that's that's the purpose of this. And the tool itself looks pretty easy to use. Doesn't come with instructions, but I wonder if the instructions are actually on the device itself. So we'll just hold the power button. I've done a little reading on this device and it does use an Android base operating system. I think it's Android 5.1. So it is a little bit dated in that regard, but it's not like you're gonna be playing games on this. You're just going to be doing diagnostic work. So it looks like there's a little terms and conditions thing you have to agree to. It does have a touch screen, that's useful. So we have this menu that has various options within it. This is the diagnostic system menu. But if we go back to the home screen, we'll see that this actually operates just like an Android style tablet. You can access the internet here, which is kind of neat. It takes you to the OBD Prog home website here. If you're used to Android, you can hit this kind of multi-function key and start clearing the applications you have open. Slide down from the top, you can connect it to your Wi-Fi, connect it to Bluetooth, you can adjust sp screen brightness and all of the things you'd expect to have on any sort of Android operating system. So we have some hotkeys down here that take you directly into the diagnostic program. One thing I learned is you do need to set up an account. So there's a yearly membership associated to this. You get one free year. I'm not sure what the membership cost is, but I believe it allows you to download perhaps the latest model year's diagnostic programs. You can see you can set up a login here. I'm not going to get into that. I've got an upgrade function in here. Again, you have to log in. I've already downloaded all the latest packages, but again, at the end of the year, there might be more for the latest machines that each manufacturer has released. Um, there's support if you're having any issues, team viewer, so you can share your screen with support and some settings, but let's get into the diagnostic program itself. So here are all the manufacturers that are supported on this tablet. You can see we've got BMW, Ducati, Honda, KTM, Triumph, and Yamaha. So quite a widespread. Unfortunately, if you have Aprilia, this won't work for you. But otherwise, Ducati is one of the big ones that's impossible to like do a service reset on. So let's dig into that real quick. So we just kind of go into this menu here. And you can identify bike by VIN number or select it from a list. I usually just go by the list. And let's go to one. It's a little interesting how they've decided to categorize this up. 
but for example, we have 1198, 1198R, 1198S, we have 1199 Panigale, Panigale R, Superleggera, 1299 Panigale. So you can see almost all of the latest Ducatis are in there. It doesn't look like they have the V4 Panigale in there, but I would guess that eventually you will see a software update to include that as well. So let's dig into my 1198S here. You can see we have some service functions here, including service lamp reset. Now, at this point, I will need to connect it to the bike. We can't just get to it through the menus. So let's go back and check out some of the other bikes we have access to. Now, let's back up here. A question I constantly get is, how do I reset the service light on my Multistrada? Most people are asking because they, they don't have the first generation of the 1200. They have like the DVT model. So let's see if the DVT model of Multistrada is in this system. Scroll down past all the monsters. Multistrada, we have Multistrada 1260. So there's our DVT models. If we get into that, look at all the options we have in here. Engine management, ABS, Bluetooth, coding and resetting, uh, service system reset. So service light reset. That's huge. I mean, you can basically do everything a Ducati de dealer can do through this system. Just look at, I mean, they have the Multistrada 950 on here as well. I mean, if you have a selection of Ducatis, having a tool like this is a huge time saver and honestly money saver. Huge selection. If you have a Diavel, X Diavel, there you go. You have all the same functions. Hyper Modard. So really it covers pretty much the full swath of Ducatis except for maybe the most recent ones, 2021, 2022 models. So let's back back out and see, for example, BMW's in here, KTM. I'm curious what KTM has got. I've always wanted the 1290 Super Duke and I'm wondering if that's in here. RC8 is in here, 1290 Super Adventure. So Super Duke GT, that's actually the one I'd want. Chassis management, tire pressure monitoring system. Mobilizer, service reset, suspension. So yeah, you can do everything in here. Well, unfortunately I don't have any of those bikes to show you to demo on, but we can start hooking this up to the bikes I have behind me. All right, so the first bike we're gonna try the scanner tool out on is my buddy's XSR 900 Yamaha. Pretty sweet looking bike, a lot of fun to ride. But recently the check engine light has come on to the dashboard and we're not really sure if it's tied to the battery going dead at one point or it needing an oil change. Either way, it requires it to go to the dealership to basically clear the code. So we're going to hook up the scanner tool and see if we can't clear the light on the dashboard. So the, the diagnostic port is located under the seat and it's a little hard to find if you don't know what you're looking for. It's this little white plug and it has a cap on it. It just sits right here behind all of that set of wires. And that is the light that we see on the dashboard, is that check engine light right there. So we'll see if we can't clear that. One of the adapter harnesses that the scanner tool comes with is kind of this multi-pigtail style one. I assume just works for all multiple years of Yamahas. And the one we want is this four pin one, which will hook right up to that. Hooked up the tool to that diagnostic port. So now we'll just turn the ignition on on the bike here. Go into the diagnostic program and we'll select Yamaha. Let's start with diagnosis. And we have an option to read fault codes, so we'll start there. Looks like we have one for engine stalling. And then we've got error in writing on EEPROM recover. Malfunction in ECU corresponding diagnostic code 60 and 78. Looks like it only occurred once. Zero engine speed. It's pretty cool how you can dig into that. Looks like it takes a freeze frame as to when the error was recorded and you can see the metrics of the entire bike at the time the error was recorded, which is pretty cool. So I imagine this was just a bit of a fluke and it's probably something that won't return, especially since there's only one occurrence. So we'll just go ahead and clear the code with the special functions we've got here. You can learn the idle speed, CO volume adjustment. So these are special Yamaha specific service functions if you wanted to do them. Let's see what we can see about the engine stall. Number of occurrences, 66. Uh-oh. <laughs> do you think you've stalled it 66 times? No. No way. Ignition on total count. I wonder if they forgot to put a decimal in there. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a little high. It does seem uh, in the trillions to be a bit high. All right. Well, we'll just erase the fault codes. Ignition switch is turned on. Engine does not launch. I, I assume that means the engine is not on. 
Yes, we want to clear the codes. All right. Look at that, it's off. Look at that. All right, let's turn the ignition on, see if in fact the code did go away. Clear. Clear. Job done. Next, we're gonna try out the scanner on my Ducati 1198S. This is the 2009 model. Now, the scanner did come with a diagnostic cable that is Ducati specific, that's this four pin style that this 1198S does have an adapter for back here in the rear storage compartment. However, this will not allow you to access the bike's ECU. I've already tried it. That particular adapter cable, which is right here, does not work for this. It will not communicate with the bike's ECU. Unfortunately, you will have to get a different diagnostic cable adapter, one that I already had because when I went through to clear the engine codes when I first went through this bike, I had to get anyways. So that is one stipulation for the 1198 and probably 1098, maybe even older Ducatis. Now I will say the cable that did come with the diagnostic scanner will work with the Multistrada 1200 because that's the same style of connector. It's that four pin connector. So if you have a like a 2010 or newer Multistrada, then this tools adapter will work for that. As you can see, I've pulled off the left side fairing. That's because the diagnostic connector for one of these bikes is this three pin connector down here. And you can see that the diagnostic connector that I've gotten for it is this style. It has two pigtails that come off and connect directly to the battery. I've already verified the polarity of these two leads, but that is a critical piece you need to do to make sure you don't accidentally brick your ECU. You need to verify the polarity is correct on these leads. You wanna make sure it's not accidentally reversed when this was created at the factory. So once you've connected that to the three pin connector, you just simply connect it to the OBD2 cable that the scanner comes with. You do need to switch on the bike's ignition. And then we'll select Ducati from the menu. And we'll just select the vehicle from the list. It starts with the one, 1198. We'll scroll down to 1198S. And you see we have two options here. We can either reset the service lamp, which is the biggest capability of this diagnostic tool because otherwise you have to go to the dealer. So we can see that first. Tap on that. And this is just saying, hey, this could throw off some stored information on this ECU. Are you sure you want to continue? And you say, agree. And it forces you to enter a password, which it gives it to you right there. And it's just one, two, three. Hit enter. And you can see we have this service indicator light switch off. So if it's saying, the Desmo service is due. This is where you go into, hit enter, and it'll clear that on the dashboard. I don't currently have that light on my dashboard. I've already cleared that. But if you had that problem on your Ducati, this is how you'd clear that. Again, the same thing would apply to the Multistrada as well. Now we go into the engine management section. We select that's the ECU we have. We see we have a menu of all kinds of things. We can look at the ECU information. I'll read the ECU and get the details about this ECU here. See the date it was programmed on. And then we can read fault codes. Which there's actually quite a few things stored in memory on this thing. Uh, none of them are active anymore. Battery voltage, value above upper limit, I guarantee you that correlates to the voltage regulator I had to replace on this bike. Uh, engine speed circuit, open circuit, fuel pump control, open circuit. So why don't we go ahead and clear these? We can er erase fault codes here. Enter. Enter. And now the codes have been erased. Go back in to read them. They're gone. And we've gone into special functions again. And we can see we can switch off the service lamp from in here. Uh, Self-adaptive parameter zero setting. And then throttle position sensor reset. We can do all of those special functions from in here. I'm not going to run any of them because this bike is actually just fine. Some other neat diagnostic things you can do are active tests. So, for example, if you want to test an individual component, we can do that. So if we go into active test, uh, we have manual control over all of these components of the bike. 
fuel pump relay, stepper control, injector control if we wanted to try out the injectors, exhaust valve control, if we want to manually operate or actuate the exhaust valve. We can do that and you can hear the exhaust valve operating. We can turn on the electric fan. All right, so pretty much all the functions you need to do to diagnose any issues with this Ducati. Next, we're gonna hook the diagnostic tool up to my 2007 BMW R1200RT. So this did come with an adapter cable. It's kind of this circular plug that goes in underneath the seat, connected to the OBD2 connector that goes into the unit. Flip the ignition on, go into our menu and select BMW, and we'll see if this auto identify VIN number works. And it did find the VIN number, cool. We've got the non-police version. And we've got this menu of all sorts of systems inside of the bike. Now I know mine doesn't have the electronic suspension, but if you had the ESA system, you could go in there and look at all of the calibrations within there and any fault codes. If you had a traction control system, um, a radio, you know, mine doesn't have any of these items, but they are there. If you have any ABS system issues, then that is in here as well. And you can read live data flow from the ABS system. All these different parameters you can select or you can just select them all to read. So let's do that. And the bike's not on, so we don't really have any active information coming through here other than battery voltage, which is pretty cool. But if you're trying to track down an ABS issue, this is where you would go to see if any one of these inputs was out of range or not operating as expected. Um, active test. So you can actuate individual components of this engine. For example, if you wanted to run the fuel pump, you can do that here. Injectors, um, idle actuators. So I can just go ahead and run that. You can't hear it, but it's actually activating the right side idle uh, control valve. That's how you can verify a component is actually operating. Let's check out the live data stream. So let's just select all of the available inputs, hit enter, and start the bike and see what happens here. So that's pretty cool. You can see live data stream of all the engine's sensors, and you can diagnose any sort of issues that might be going on there if you have any. So we have a section in here called Special Functions. And we can adjust the idle adjusters, the idle control valves. Let's go ahead and just do that. You can actually hear them moving around right now. You probably can't hear them on the camera, but on these boxer twins. This is a good procedure to do every once in a while to sort of smooth out the, the idle running. I mean, these things will never idle perfectly smooth, but this certainly helps. So that's done, easy enough. All right, so lots of cool controls you can do within here for BMW RT. Again, tons of different BMW models available within this program. Let's just see if how current it gets with the R model. So we can go back to R1100s, Adventures, get up into the R1200s. Let's see if we get to the water-cooled stuff. Looks like it. And even the R1250s, in fact, R9Ts. So yeah, if you've got even modern BMWs, it's going to be able to help you out. Let's see what the S1000. We have the S1000RR in here as well. What is special engines? Industrial motor. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Hmm. All right. And finally, we're gonna hook up the diagnostic tool to this 2005 CBR-1000RR Repsol Edition. 
And the diagnostic connector on this is a little more difficult to get to. You have to remove this side panel on the fairings and it's this little red connector that's actually electrical taped to this main wiring harness. And the adapter cable is included. It's a small four pin connector. All right, so we'll flip the ignition on and we'll select Honda from the list. So let's see if we can't just do the auto scan to find the bike. I know this is the M015A diagnostic connector and it is currently scanning. And apparently it has found one fault. HESD linear solenoid failure. So that is the Honda electronic steering damper. Let's try and clear it by clicking erase fault codes. Okay, it's been erased. And I'm gonna start the bike up and see if it doesn't reset a code. Looks like you can't do the scan while the engine's on, so I've turned it off. Okay, it looks like the code is gone and everything's good, so I'm sure it was just a historic code that just needed to be cleared. All right, so we can tap into that. Can read the ECU information. Not a whole lot of information there other than the part number, it looks like. All right, so that concludes my testing of this tool. And it's clear what the upsides of this tool, the positives of this tool. I mean, it can basically allow you to do anything that a dealership would allow you to do. And it saves you a ton of money and a ton of time from having to schedule a service appointment at a dealership to read a fault code or just clear a service light. However, there are some downsides to this tool, and it's going to happen with basically any tool out there. And let's just start going down the list. The first one is that it covers Honda and Yamaha, but not the other big two Japanese manufacturers, Kawasaki and Suzuki. I'm not sure why they're not covered, but it is a bit of a downer that you can't diagnose those manufacturers since they're so common. Other downside is clearly not all the adapter cables needed are included and I think that's a given just because I mean there's probably 30 different connector types for various diagnostic ports but the main ones are included but as you can see the older Ducatis you'll need to get a different diagnostic cable and the last but probably largest downside of it is the cost of this thing it retails at about five hundred fifty dollars now, if you have Amazon Prime, there is a special going on right now to, so you can get it about 10% off and get it closer to 500 bucks. But the reality is it is an expensive machine. Now, obviously, if you're a shop, you can make that money back quickly. You can diagnose basically any motorcycle that comes through the shop. However, if you're just the owner of a single motorcycle, either one or two motorcycles, it's going to be hard to justify the cost of this unit. However, if you do own probably three or four motorcycles, each of a different make, can easily pay this thing off every time one of those bikes has a service light come up because a shop charges you for one hour more than likely to clear a service light or run a diagnostic check and you know hourly shop rates nowadays are in the neighborhood of $150 you do that three or four times and you've paid for this thing and you don't have to schedule a service appointment you can do it in the comfort of your own garage but probably more than likely the best use case for this is for a group of writing friends to pool their money together and buy this thing. If you have a group of riding buddies, 10 people or so, all on these European manufacturers and some of these Japanese manufacturers, you can totally justify buying this. Spread the cost out amongst multiple people. You can all clear service lights and do all of the dealership level diagnostics all within this tool. And suddenly this thing starts to make sense. I'm totally happy with this thing and I'm happy I've been given the chance to check it out and be able to utilize it in my own garage. It'll be certainly a critical tool that I use from here on out. If you're interested in purchasing this scanner, be sure to check the link in the description below showing you where you can purchase it, as well as a coupon code that will get you a free battery tester. That's all I've got for this video, but there'll be much more here very soon. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again next time.